today's vlog is actually about adult races. So um, I'm actually maybe about 20 minutes away or so before I go in for my final consultation and sign on the dotted line to go for my third round of treatment. And so I thought, well, it'd be interesting to see um, what my treatment plan is going to look like. Um, I actually, this is not my first round, this is my third round. Um, I actually had adult braces when I was in my early 20s uh, to actually correct uh, a class 3 malocclusion open bite, uh, which was a direct result of my lower jaw sort of overgrowing or being the same size as my upper jaw. And so that causes, you know, your bite to be all kind of funky and my teeth weren't perfectly straight, but they were certainly not crooked or anything like that. Um, but my bite wasn't ideal. It was actually a bite that kind of came together like this um, when the molars touched. So there's a, a very apparent gap. It was almost like biting down like that and my teeth closed and it just wasn't good. And of course, when your bite's off, it causes all sorts of issues in your cheek muscles and your joint muscles, right? So your TMJ, your temporal mandibular joint, is just in front of your ears. And when you open your jaw, um, or when I opened my jaw back then, it was clicking and popping and it was actually causing a lot of tension, which would then lead to migraines and neck and even upper back pain. And it was just not a pleasant experience. So uh, my dentist referred me to this orthodontist, who by the way is great. And you know, he looked at it and says, geez, like, you know, your first round of treatment is gonna require you to wear braces for about two years time. And then you're gonna have to consult with an orthognathic surgeon who will then go and saw and remove your entire upper jaw you know, away from your face, pull it forward a couple of millimeters and then use some metal straps and screws to sort of piecemeal everything all back together. Uh, and that was just one of the two. The other portion of the surgery was also, you know, I believe to saw away my lower jaw or something like that and then shave off a couple of millimeters and move that in to sort of give me the ideal bite. And so that was crazy. Um, it was like $10,000 to do that procedure and I had no insurance, um, you know, coverage at all, including the province um, like provincial health care didn't cover it because it was considered a cosmetic procedure even though it was very much functional so anyway uh, fast forward you know a few years in my early 20s so this would have been what like 2003 2004 um, you know I told my orthodontist I go I can't really afford to pay not only you know for the orthodontic treatment but to also pay ten thousand dollars on top of that to get orthodontic surgery I said forget it and I go who the heck wants to saw their face into three different spots not me and so we had to come up with an alternative treatment plan and of course he managed to successfully um, correct my bite just enough that my top teeth um, overlap the f lower teeth like this in an ideal bite scenario um, uh, without any surgery which was a miracle. I remember wearing like a million elastics in my mouth. It looked like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> it was quite creepy looking but it actually worked. And so um, two years passes by. Um, I didn't get the surgery, but what was really funny was, you know, I kind of gave my heads up that I go, are you sure you want to take these braces off so soon? Because I go, I have a family history of, you know, tooth movement from my mother's side of the family where things seem to kind of go haywire when it comes to teeth. So he says, no worries, you know, wear your retainer, which I diligently did. But then lo and behold, six months later, um, <laughs> my teeth shifted enough and my bite was now going back to being a straight open bite. And so... Um, of course, we sort of knew that could possibly happen because surgery was to ultimately permanently correct that, um, but I didn't do it. So then he says, okay, well, you're going to have to go and do braces again a second time, no charge, of course. So then I go through another two years of wearing braces, and so now I'm like in my mid-20s. And as a matter of fact, um, I went through the exact treatment procedure, and I even wore more elastics in my mouth for even longer. In fact, I wore them 24-7 almost. Right, and I used to work retail. Can you imagine like all these elastics and everything in your mouth? It was a very busy looking scene and I think I tripped some people out when I would help them out. Um, but anyway, uh, then of course, you know, I graduated, you know, college and then of course my college or my university photographs looked like I just finished high school. Uh, and I was okay with that, no big deal. And my, and my bite was corrected and it's been what, 10 or 12 years roughly uh, where, you know, things went without incident. I had no more jaw pain. You know, I didn't have to worry about my face being all cut up. I didn't have to worry about my face going numb and having nerve damage because I sawed my jaws in half because that never happened. However, last January, around the time when I had my laser eye surgery, I um, I started getting some TMGA, you know, pains again. And, you know, there's some clicking and grinding and all sorts of funny sounds from my jaw joints. 
And I thought, oh, is it just from stress, you know, now that I'm married and have two kids and I have a full-time job and I'm doing YouTube publishing and fixing cars and all these different things. And I thought, oh, it might be stress-related. And so I tried to sort of cope with it for like the longest time, you know, just by massage and just trying to learn to relax and that never helped. Um, and my teeth actually ached all the time for some reason. It felt like I was grinding them. And so I think I, in June, I went and saw my orthodontist and I kind of told him, you know, voiced my concerns to him. And then he says to me, he goes, oh yeah, um, because you might be suffering from bruxism because of all the stress in life. And I thought, well, I'm not that stressed. But he says my bite was a bit off and he told me that, uh, or he asked me actually, he goes, am I wearing my retainers uh, to keep my teeth aligned? Because he goes, he can see some shifting going on. And I said, well, not very diligently. Um, uh, my bottom retainer fit but my top one definitely didn't so he made um, he kind of looked at my bite and says well you know let's see how they fit and sure enough the top retainer didn't fit and I had to have new one a top new top one made up but then of course he thought well you know because if I make your full retainer it's not gonna really be beneficial anyway so um, let's take a look at what other options you have to help alleviate that joint pain so of course he made me one of these um, this is like a, like a TMJ splint and a retainer, I guess, so to speak. And so the whole idea is that you know, wear it like this you know, in your mouth. Ooh, that's tight. And then you know, wear your bottom Essex that was made way back in 2004, 2005. And you wear them together like this. But the problem was I work in an office environment. And as you can tell, just after clicking it in, um, I've suddenly got this wicked lisp. Uh, my lips look funny everything seems awkward and so it even looks funny and you can see you talk to people and this is what you're they're presented with and of course you kind of get all slobbery and drooly and it's just not a pleasant thing and so I would literally endure this thing almost again 24 hours a day seven days a week dealing with all these different people and clients and co-workers and whatever it is that I had to do and it just it made me feel super self-conscious and therefore your compliance and wearing this device um, isn't good and so um, I went back you know say I think in October of this year and I told them like look I go the TMJ splint helps uh, but at the end of the day like I still have these aching pains and there's some days where I actually get shooting pain because it's so it's so sore and then, uh, you know, we finally said, you know, what are my other options? Do I have to get the jaw surgeries if I do? You know, I'm a lot more financially established now, so I guess I could do it. And, um, you know, him and my dentist sort of thought, well, that's kind of extreme. And I kind of got the impression that I was too old to get that done now. So, of course, the final option is you can do orthodontic treatment for a third round since, you know, it was your own fault for not wearing your retainer, you know, seven days a week like you should. And so I thought, okay, well, I have work insurance. Um, you know I can theoretically get it done so that's why I'm here so I just figured I'd share my little story with you guys um, getting adult braces isn't that bad right I've already had this would be round three no one cares what you look like um, but I certainly uh, YouTube didn't exist back then so now that YouTube's around I can share what I am gonna go through over the next two years so um, yeah let's see what comes around All right, guys, it's been probably two hours or so, and this is basically what I walked out with. Um, you can see here, I got clear ceramic braces that are self-legating, so there's no actual clear tie that goes around the wire. And they bonded the uppers, but not necessarily all the way to the very back molar because this is the initial sort of movement phases anyway, so putting that last bracket in the back on each side of my upper arch wouldn't have done anything for me anyways but um, the process itself was of course painless um, and in fact uh, went a lot quicker than I was expecting because the last two times I had braces I think it I easily spent probably two and a half to three hours in the office um, so this was kind of a pleasant surprise um, do they hurt no nope, not in the slightest bit as a matter of fact and that's because they're using a really light duty wire 
and um, I suspect that they're not really that scratchy because I opted to get ceramic brackets versus the traditional metal speed brackets although um, if you look at them they are actually uh, quite large compared to the little metal ones that uh, that I had the first and second round um, and they still actually use the same bracket so in about a month's time uh, I'm gonna bond the bottom ones with normal metal ones they don't use ceramics for the bottom and then they're going to attach the sort of back bracket on the upper arch uh, rearmost molars so um, all in all I think I've been here for over two hours now the first hour to do paperwork and then the last hour to do bonding so uh, we'll see how I feel a little bit later on today, but um, I wonder if I went and bought a beer right now if I'd get ID'd. Probably not. I got white hair already, so <laughs> anyways.